Hi, I'm Robert Harsh, YouTube channel Basso 9x13, and welcome to part two of Goodbye Blue Sky, How and Why. In part one, I covered preparation, research, learning about the song, listening to it, looking at some sheet music, and how I set up my bass with a drop D tuning, a little pickup to feed into a processor to give me a chorus effect and a little bit of reverb, and blending with the mics, which pick up percussion on the body of the guitar. In this section, I hope to get through the introduction and the first verse of Goodbye Blue Sky. The introduction to the version that I put with my slideshow began with a nice low D, and I fooled around with the harmonics a little bit. A little bit of percussion on the bass. That was all improvised, and really I was just testing the mics and just seeing how it sounded on the recorder. I liked how it sounded, so I left it in. Or you can just start Roger's song with that familiar arpeggio that starts on a D, contains an F sharp, another D, and a G. Basically the D is playing your pulses on quarter notes, and the fun syncopated movement happens just with two frets. Then there's this little riff. That's an E, C, a B, and then an A, fingered on the seventh fret on the D string, and also the open A string doubles it an octave lower, because you're going to move your top A immediately up to a C natural here state the, the main theme of the verse. It's the droning A string and single notes on the melody and it's all chromatics in those four frets. We're going to do just repeating these two between the C and the B natural. It's going to walk up to that D on the 12th fret. Another way to do that is to finger that D on the 12th fret and start your arpeggio about the same time you do a pull off on that. Now we've landed on this arpeggio that's a variation of the opening arpeggio. And you're ready for one more fill that's going to lead into the first statement of the OO theme, as I call it. The riff I play begins on an E, fingered on the ninth fret of the G string. And it's all right in here, 9, 7, Nine, seven, nine, seven, open D string. Just have to play them in the right rhythm. And there's a little bit of a slide up for grace notes on a pickup to that E. And a harmonic played on the G string at the seventh fret. Then I do a little percussion fill. There's an open A string that acts as a pickup leading straight from that fill into the downbeat. And we're right there at the first OO theme. Now the melody line here is essentially just down the scale, starting on an F sharp, to an E, to a D, to a C sharp, then a little bit of an upper neighbor trill natural, fingered on the D string, ninth fret, and then you've got to bring your fingers up to play the rest of the arpeggio.
Now after the last pass of the verse, you're playing this B minor arpeggio. There's actually no minor third in the chord, but it's very much implied from the key signature, the fact that our tonic is that minor third. And I'm just doing a little bit of a dance on this, the same strings I'm playing to give that little hop down. my slideshow recording, I did not articulate all the eighth notes that correspond to the lyrical content in this verse. In retrospect, I kind of regret that, because this line is one of the neatest examples of text painting that I've found in pop music. Text painting is a compositional technique where the music is used to illustrate and provide subtext to the lyrical content. Did you see the frightened ones? Did you hear the falling bombs? Did you ever wonder why we had to run for shelter when the promise of a brave new world unfurled beneath a clear blue sky? Now, as sung, these questions have a stutter on the did. It goes like this. Did, 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 did you see the frightened ones? Did, 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 did you hear the falling bombs? You get the imitation of the approaching wheels of the train. And then when the melody moves down a half step, it's like a Doppler effect as the train moves past. So we get more information. They're hiding in the subway tunnels, the underground. And the next line gives us even more information on that as it moves down, down, down relentlessly, clear to the bottom, and then jumps up with clear blue sky. I have my harmonies going on that starting point with a C natural and an E natural in a major third relationship played on these two strings, on the D string and the G string, 10th and 9th fret, respectively. I keep a major third relationship with this all the way down. There's the B and the B, the B and the D sharp, I should say, to an A and a C sharp. Now, both editions I've seen have written this as a C and a C natural, but I found that didn't quite work for me on the bass guitar. So I continue with the C natural or C sharp there to a G and a B natural. Now I spread out to play that minor second with the F sharp and the A natural. And this this point that I feel very sorry for those of you who are playing this on a long scale bass. The riff continues, parallel harmonies again, another minor third harmony. This time we've got an open G string, and the E is fingered on the second fret of the D string. Now at this point I go to single notes. You could conceivably continue the harmony down on this, um, from this point. But it is rather tricky to play, and it gets a little bit muddy. Instead, I like to just sort of pick and choose between the two. I play part of the top harmony, but I want to get that low B in there to establish the tonic. And then I jump up to playing a fourth on the fourth fret. I do a slide up, and I strum harmonics, usually across three strings. the end of the first verse. Stay tuned for part three when we'll tackle verse two.